You might have some devices or appliances that are connected to the internet because, well, we're all geeks. Today, with our friends Ed and Dima and Renga, um, so Ed and Dima from Keurig and Renga from Azure IoT Central team, we'll discuss how such a solution, which is the Keurig Smart Brewers, um, is implemented leveraging Azure IoT Central. We'll look at a demo of the actual solution, and then we'll dig into the behind the scenes. And that's today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. This is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. And today we will talk about coffee and coffee machines and connected coffee machines. And for that, we have friends from Keurig. Uh, we're here with us today, as well as Ranga from the Azure IoT Central team. Let's do a round of introduction to get started. Ed, you're first here uh, just on my right. So how about you start with a short introduction about yourself and what you're doing at Keurig? Hi, my name is Ed Marks. I'm a uh, senior principal engineer at Curry, an architect. The uh, area I work in is uh, our connected platform where I'm responsible for the design and implementation of our uh, connected platform supporting our connected brewers. Great. Dima, how about you? Hey, Olivier. Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, I'm a product manager also at Keurig. And I'm responsible for a portfolio of uh, various enabling technologies um, that includes things like IoT platforms and services, as well as some machine learning work that's uh, kind of behind the scenes of our uh, current and future connected products. Awesome. Renga, you're no stranger to the show, but still, for people who don't know you, how about you introduce yourself and what you're doing at Microsoft? Thanks, Olivier. Uh, I'm Ranga Vadlamudi. I'm a program manager on Azure IoT, uh, focusing on uh, IoT solutions, uh, basically through uh, IoT Central. Great. So we have a nice panel. And um, what I would like is to uh, discuss what's happening behind these great project and, and solutions that we see popping around uh, when it comes to connecting day-to-day -day devices to the internet. Uh, and we've seen lots of scenarios around connecting, uh, you know, a, uh, a fridge, connecting a brewer uh, at home to the internet and providing consumers with some functionality. And we'll see some of that uh, with a series of coffee brewers that, that your company is, is selling uh, and making available and that your team uh, made smarter, more, int more interactable, I would say. Uh, but we'll talk also about What's behind the scenes? I really want to focus a bit more about you know what's happening behind. What's the interest of having um, you know Curry connecting these machines uh, that consumers are using or enterprises are using to the internet to the cloud? Uh, and so let's start with you, Dima. Tell us about the Curry Smart Coffee Brewers uh, that that Curry uh, is providing. Yeah, Olivier. So we're very excited to have launched our first uh, smart brewer earlier this this summer. Uh, the name is uh, K Supreme Plus Smart, and uh, this uh, this coffee maker is, is special in a couple of different ways. And so it it leverages a lot of technologies that we've already had in other products, such as multi-stream, which is about extracting flavor and aroma from from coffee. But it adds a lot of uh, IoT functionality that is uh, that is a first for Keurig. And so just to give you a highlight of a couple of kind of key features that our consumers are excited about with this product. And uh, I think at the center of it all is a technology called Brew ID, which is uh, a technology that allows the coffee maker to identify the brand and the roast of the pod that you're placing into the machine. And it applies optimal brew parameters. So you can think about uh, how to extract the coffee optimally for that roast. And it essentially gives you the best cup of coffee imaginable uh, based on your coffee preferences and the coffee pod that you choose to consume. Um, another couple of features that I think are worth noting are smart auto delivery, which is a way for us to track your pod usage and ship you a new set of pods when we know that you're running low. So in other words, no more getting a box of pods while you're on vacation and no more running out when you've got in-laws in town who are drinking uh, coffee at your place. 
And then first and finally, I think the, the last feature that I'll call out here at, at a high level is the integration with your smart home. So this is an IoT product for consumers. So of course, we integrate with your Google Home, your Alexa, uh, to make sure that it's uh, a part of your uh, broader smart home that uh, you uh, use every day. Nice. If a consumer, if I want to sum it up, especially for developers watching us, uh, we're actually feeding their energy from coffee. So they have a coffee that is better because uh, it's it's actually brewed exactly how this kind of grain or whatever pot you put in there is is and is supposed to be brewed. And then you have the continuous supply that is coming in because of the service that you guys are providing. Uh, as well as that integration, uh, you know, with your um, with your own automation, so you can uh, start your coffee from your from your desk while you're working or something like that. But I think I think to illustrate all of that, uh, you came with a short video that shows you know the the final application, and then we'll we'll talk about what's happening behind a little bit more. But let's look at what the application and what the solution looks like. Yeah, let's do that. Yes, let's uh, cue the video, please. Uh, so what you're seeing here. On your screen now is our uh, mobile app, as well as two video cameras pointing at the K Supreme Plus Smart itself. And what you're seeing happen right now is I just put a pod into the machine, and the machine actually is identifying that pod, and you can see that the brew ID has lit up. And both on the app and on the brewer, we can see that it recognizes that it's a Green Mountain Coffee Roasters Breakfast Blend. And what we're hap what it will we'll do next is we'll actually uh, start brewing directly from the app. So I press the button on the mobile app and the video just finished but uh, you can sort of imagine the rest happens the coffee engine uh, you know brews your cup of coffee and uh, delivers you a fresh roast um, ready for your morning yeah I, I like that compared to other solutions I've seen in the past I, I like the simplicity it's like straight to the point very simple interaction because uh, lots of uh, consumer IoT solutions are very often in the way right they're they're here not super intuitive and they're basically not simplifying the process but complexifying it and I love the way the way you guys thought about that user um, interface and and the functionality being being something that really helps uh, that's the front end that's the mobile application you know there are technologies that have been there already to connect a device to another one or control it through the phone but in the case of your solution there's something different which is the brewers are connected to the cloud and you're using Azure IoT Central for that. Can you tell me a bit more about how you landed on Azure IoT Central uh, and uh, what does it mean you know, for, for you, Keurig, uh, at a high level? Yeah, so from a, from a product perspective, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time looking at you know, different solutions out there in the field to sort of understand, okay, we're going from you know, thousands of devices to tens of thousands of devices to millions of devices over the next couple of years. And, we needed to pick a solution that made sense for that trajectory. And so I think there were a couple of factors that really mattered quite a bit from a product perspective that um, were at the top of our um, list of things that we needed to make sure to get right. Uh, the first one I think is, as for any product company, time to market was, was critical. So getting a solution that could get us somewhere uh, quickly uh, was, was paramount. And it's something that we needed to make sure that we could do right. right? Um, and then finally, this is our first connected product, right? So we're a coffee company at heart. Uh, we make lots of coffee makers, but this is the first time that we're getting into this connected space. And so mm -hmm. reducing kind of the risk of delivering the product to market, as well as the reducing the risk of operating this uh, connected solution with, as Ed will show, with the app, with you know voice assistance, with the brewer, lots of moving parts. And so we were looking for a solution in the market that would really help us de-risk. And then finally, I think the third pillar of, you know, kind of our selection matrix was really about how do we allow our teams to focus on what they do best, which is innovate in the coffee space, innovate in that consumer engagement and interaction space. And so it was all about how do we focus most of our time on new feature development? How do we build that KDP intellectual property and KDP specific know-how? And then how do we leverage technology partners that do other things really well and kind of, you know, ride essentially the coattails of of uh, a lot of technology that is um, a platform level that could really be leveraged across coffee as well as other spaces. And how do we make sure that operationally, we can make sure that our future investment wouldn't be purely a sustaining one to keep the thing up and running, but it would really be focused around innovation and new features and getting uh, more and more consumers on board with our connected products.
I love that. So not reinventing the world. Basically, you wanted to do IoT without doing IoT, right? Because that's not your your core expertise. It's brewing coffee, the machines themselves, and so on. So leveraging an existing platform that's mature enough for you to leverage in, in a consumer product in production at scale and so on. Um, before we jump into a demo with Ed of the back end, because that's really something I'm sure our developers will be super interested. Um, Ranga, on, on our side, on the Microsoft side, can you tell us a bit what this partnership with Keurig, um, developing with them that solution for consumers uh, meant uh, you know, for the IT Central team, for the product, the features, and so on? Sure. Uh, it was a great partnership uh, as we went through the journey, right? And uh, what it did was we were able to uh, capture all the requirements, especially in a consumer IoT uh, uh, space and scenarios. And it basically uplifted a lot of our uh, features as we gathered requirements all the way from device interacting into the cloud uh, within uh, I IoT Central itself as far as uh, device management, uh, export, uh, data out into the uh, KDP enterprises and also uh, enabling like uh, the mobile app scenarios where uh, uh, the API uh, surface was uh, uplifted. And overall, uh, it was a great partnership for us, uh, especially uh, me working with Diva more from the product side and also uh, partner in crime from the engineering side of IIT Central, uh, Ian Hollier, uh, working very closely with Ed. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, from my perspective uh, for IIT Central, it was a, a great opportunity for us to uplift the product. Uh, nice. Yeah. And, and I think this will be highlighted as well when we look at how IIT Central has been used. Uh, so we, we saw the front end, we saw the mobile app, the, the brewer and how they were interacting. What we didn't see is the backend. And it's super hard to, to visualize the backend. IIT Central, is a uh, what we call an A pass solution. It's just a platform uh, allows creating applications uh, that will allow you to connect devices, manage the devices, and then extract insights from the sensor data and also control these devices. IoT Central um, also provides uh, multi-tenancy solutions, uh, a way of, uh, of of managing scale that you don't have to care about or or, or, wor or worry about, I would say. Uh, so it's, it's pretty advanced. We have plenty of IT show episodes, but Ed, I would like for you to tell us more and to show us how Keurig is using IoT Central and what are the key elements in the solution that made you, you know, choose uh, that platform for, um, for your solution? All right, thanks, Olivier. So let's talk a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes. You saw the demo from Dima about what the user experience is. Um, behind the scenes, we looked at doing this a number of different ways and um, probably uh, landed up on IoT Central for five or six reasons. So I'm gonna highlight a couple of them. The first one, and it's on the screen in front of you right now, is the ability to build out dashboards very quickly based on all the IoT data that you've built into your data model between the brewer and the cloud. So this particular screen is something that our customer care team might use or our level two support or our development team. But we're basically able to manage to or manage to build out a fleet management dashboard system in hours once we understood how to use it um, versus what was probably would have been like a six month website development uh, process and then having to own that website and maintain it all of that forever. But Let's talk a little bit about more about what's coming up behind the scenes. So Dima talked about um, Brew ID being the center of a lot of this. And in the lower right, you could see um, a box that talks about PM, which unfortunately it stands for puncture mechanism, which is what we call that thing. You put the pods in. Um, it's currently empty. I'm going to put in a pod and close it. And at this point, the off-screen brewer here is doing the Brew ID thing. And you can see in my mobile app that it's already magically learned, hey, you put a Green Mountain Coffee Roasters French Vanilla in, and you'll notice that the PM content changed. So what happened was behind the scenes, the brewer ran its identification. It put it in a device twin. The device twin got picked up in the dashboard. It also got exported to a uh, pop subsystem, which we have running in the background. So one of the best things we found in IoT Central was actually the data export capability that it has. 
So we can take any properties, telemetry, uh, state changes that occur on the device and forward them off to other um, Azure components or even non-Azure components and then process them and do things with them. So in the case of what you just saw happen, I put something in the puncture mechanism, this PM contents notification uh, data export fired off, went to an event hub, went to the pub subsystem, showed up in the mobile app in a couple of seconds. And we do this pretty much everywhere. Like for example, if I tell it to start making that brew and take us back to the device dashboard I was on originally, And we can hear the coffee brewing. Oh, yeah, good. I was wondering if people weren't going to believe me. I was actually like, doing it's happening. Here. It's happening. Yeah. Unless you make weird noises with your with your bell or something. But no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we can see the appliance state said that it went from being idle to its brewing. The brew state is it's in progress. If there was some error happening during the brew, like an overpressure or something like that, it would show up right away. If there was a reason you couldn't brew. So, for example, there's no water it would have shown up there. And this is super important, especially when you get into things like voice assistants, where you, you know, bark a command at a voice assistant, hey, go make coffee, and it can come back intelligently and say, hey, you need to add water, or there's no pod, or the puncture mechanism is open. So just being able to get that stuff, all that stuff back, gives us a really good customer experience. Um, and we're able to do that all because of the continuous data export capability. Nice, um, nice. But let me let me segue a little bit into another part of IoT, and the other part of IoT that everybody loves to talk about is OTA. Um, OTA is a complex thing where you know managing millions of brewers. We're trying to do this at scale, and the uh, amount of effort we put into OTA is uh, pretty immense. One of the things in IoT Central that helped us out incredibly is the jobs capability. What we did is we actually did an integration between Azure DevOps and the jobs capability. So when a new OTA gets uh, submitted, say, for example, to update the pod file, which is a, um, a, a piece of metadata we use to put the right descriptions on the screen in English or French or Spanish or whatever language we're trying to support. Say we want to update that because, you know, we're supporting some new brands or something like that. We would actually send a new piece of metadata. It's nothing more than a file down to the brewers. But when you're talking about lots and lots of brewers, um, there's a process we go through to, you know, get the new file, test it, um, get it approved by the right people. Now we got to roll it out to all of these brewers. So mm -hmm. this is all managed through Azure DevOps, but eventually becomes a job in IoT Central. So if I, here's a pretty simple one here that somebody launched, they said they apparently wanted to do about uh, 577 that worked for that failed. It was about eight hours ago where they sent this job out. The job was actually relatively simple to just write data into a, um, in, into a device twin, a device property in IoT Central language. And that would get picked up by the brewer and the brewer would execute on it. Um, having this meant we didn't have to figure out how to manage this one brewer at a time. Yeah. And obviously when you're, you're doing things at, at this scale, you, you segment your, your fleet of brewers into parts. You know, we segment both by just random numbers and by time zones so that when we launch these things, they sh don't show up right. You know, at eight o'clock in the morning, when you're trying to make coffee, they show up at three o'clock in the morning when hopefully you're, you're asleep. So this was super important for us as well. Um, one of the other parts that was incredibly important to us is as part of my responsibility, we're providing the backend APIs that are used by the mobile application, by the voice assistants, by other systems within Curry. Um, and when we wanted to get into the device data, we needed to go back, we wanted to go back to IoT Central. I really didn't want to be mirroring that data if I could. I really wanted to just keep it all in IoT Central. So what we landed up doing is really leveraging the IoT Central API from very, very early on um, as it was going through its previews and stuff like that. It's released now, so it's good. Um, 
but the uh, we were able to leverage that. And, and that was one of the shortcomings when we started looking at using other IoT solutions was did they give us a way to encapsulate the API that it had so that when we're exposing this out to our business users, you know, people building mobile apps and stuff like that, we could just uh, envelope that and give them a consistent experience at the API level because it's, it's not only us using the API, but in the uh, commercial world, we have vendors that are integrating this into their flow uh, for what they want to do. Nice, nice. So, so, so basically using the whole IoT Central, the API is the expert to as as the backbone of the solution, right? It's not that much of a, it's not the consumer front end. It's not for everyone occurring to, to see what everyone is brewing. It's really the backbone of a broader solution that exposes APIs, integrates with many other solu- applications uh, within the company and outside as well. One thing that I wanted to ask you, I didn't want to interrupt you because the flow of the demo was great. Uh, and it was, um, the 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 reasons or or you know it's a consumer device you don't want to have an update that comes in the way of the user right so is it fair to assume that with the uh, with the jobs with the, the 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 ability for you to focus on the the user experience rather than on the plumbing that is behind is provided by the IoT stacks of the platform um, that you're able to deliver a, an experience for consumers that is kind of seamless. Like that update of that, uh, you know, uh, that, that you're pushing to to tons of different brewers across the world to support a new a new pod type, or whatnot, is something that the user doesn't have to take care of, hey, you have a firmware update to apply, let your phone next to your device for the next half hour, and maybe it's gonna work, right? Uh, you're hitting it right on the nail, right on the head. The, the whole idea is to give the consumer a seamless experience, you know, sending, sending out updates and sending them over from a phone to your brewer and stuff like that. You know, most people just wouldn't even do it. So that means they would miss out on the experience. So by being able to automate all of this stuff, uh, and spend our time there versus building all the plumbing to do it and execute jobs and stuff like that, we were able to achieve the, the goal we really wanted to, which was give the consumer that seamless experience and um, always make sure they're getting not only seamless, but the best experience. Got it. Uh, was there something else you wanted to to highlight and show in, in, uh, in IoT Central? Um, maybe we could... Uh, spend a, a quick moment or two looking at some of the other things we're able to build out yep. from a and, and the reason I really want to go back to it is because once again, this being the backbone and central being used really in, in that commercial product is, is something that we're showing for the first time, basically. Uh, we've been talking about IH Central being used, but I think this is the first time we're really highlighting all the features uh, that can be used. And, uh, and so that's why I'm interested to go back in anything else that you have to uh, highlight here. Yeah, so a lot of what we landed up doing was just leveraging what IoT Central gave us um, Mm -hmm. and then building around it. So, for example, I I showed you this screen. Our our customer care team lives here when they get a customer on the phone and they, you know, something's not right, you know, brew ID didn't work or, you know, how come I can't brew because of some kind of error in the brewer or something like that. Um, But we also use it for management. So there's different things we can control down in the brewer. Like, do I want to see telemetry every time it happens or do I want it batched over time? Imagine in a commercial world where we might not be on a nice fast Wi-Fi link, we might be on a cellular link that we really don't want to be sending data constantly. We just want to batch it up for a couple of hours and then throw it out. Um, how often do we want to up upload lids or maybe we only want to upload lids when the machine uh, recognition didn't work very well so that we can put it into our training set. So we've got all these controls that we can hit from the, the back of the brewer. Again, it didn't have to create any of them. It was just a matter of dragging and dropping widgets and putting names on them, hopefully spelling them right. Um, all of our <laughs> ways of doing individual ODAs, you know, learning about what the brewer's done, you know, I reflashed this brewer yesterday, so it hasn't made that many brews. Um, but I can also go back and look at the history of brewer errors 
especially if you have a customer on the line who's saying, hey, I, I've had these problems all along. You know, this usually that would have just resulted in somebody sends the brewer back, we send up a new brewer, we try to diagnose what's wrong. Now we can actually look at it right away and say, oh yeah, look, it's happening. This is why it's happening. You should do X or Y or something like that and it'll go away. Yeah, um, nice. I wanted to, so for those who are not super familiar with Azure, Azure IT Central, um, there's one aspect that is about users, right? You can you can um, define permissions for different users, so users will log in. So the operator was in charge of a certain task, will not need to see everything, and also will not right. have the ability to go change that dashboard, typically, right? You would have an admin, no, but- someone designing that versus just a random uh, operator of the solution, right? Yeah, exactly. And I should have pointed that out. You know, as the as the architect of this thing, I'm kind of like super user or one of the super users. So I get to see everything. A typical customer support person wouldn't see maybe two of these tabs. And basically, unless somebody's in the development team, they're not redoing these these dashboards, they're not changing anything on them. You know, that's basically an engineering deliverable to the rest of Curry. So that was very important to us. Uh, not a screen I want to flip into now because there's so much PII on that screen. But um, you know, yeah. all of the people who have access, we've plumbed that into our our normal Azure Active Directory permissions and roles models. So you know, we can control uh, access that way. Nice um, through our normal well, IT organization. Nice. So, so one thing that you you didn't mention explicitly, but that was implicit, and that we we do realize now. But looking at that demo and how IoT Central is used, and maybe I'm I'm going to turn to you, Dima, with with that next question, and certainly the final question here. So the functionality we're seeing in IoT Central practical for you to get the data about the devices where they are at. Uh, it's the backbone of the solution that delivers the service to the customers. Um, do you see? improvement in the quality of the service as well as of the machines in the future, thanks to um, the implementation of IoT in the solution, gathering the data from the from different brewers. And then do you think there's going to be impact on the quality of the machines, of the service and so on in the short, medium, long term? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I think we in this in this demo, we focused a lot on the, the consumer benefit of IoT. Uh, there is a, a great deal of use cases within Keurig that uh, these IoT enabled IoT, IoT enabled machines enable, right? And and I think one of them you just mentioned is around you know continuous improvement of, of the product, right? So we are gathering a lot of data on any kind of issues that a brewer might experience in the field, and you know most of the time all of the successes and all of the great experiences that our consumers are experiencing with the product, and we're constantly able to use that data that comes through. Uh, that data export functionality that Ed talked about through all that information gathering to then analyze that data and then feed it into um, you know future products. And with the OTA functionality, if it's a, a, an improvement that we actually want to make to current products that are out there in the field, we can actually turn that around fairly easily just by looking at the data, determining what we can improve, and then using the OTA functionality to get that new update or improvement or a new feature out to all of our uh, existing customers. Great. You're just like exemplifying, you know, the projects that we are talking about all the time when we talk about our platforms, you know, connecting the devices, extracting the insights and taking action to make not just the service better for the consumers or the customer, but also the product itself to improve in the future. That's awesome. Thanks, uh, the three of you, for your time today. Uh, and uh, I would invite you, if you're reading and want to learn more about uh, Keurig and their use of IT Central to go check out that link below here, aka.ms slash IoT show slash Keurig and IoT Central. Thanks for watching the IoT show. Thanks, Ed, Dima, and Renga once again for coming to the show and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye, everyone.